Well, welcome everyone. Uh, again, my name is Sean Hall. Uh, I'm a uh, technology consultant, uh, author, and speaker, uh, and I'm uh, coming to you today live from uh, from New York City. So uh, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, MySQL upgrades, uh, and specifically we're going to focus on uh, a stack of technologies that facilitate uh, upgrades with zero downtime. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this presentation here on the left, uh, and on the right I have a number of terminal windows, um, and I'm going to take you through step by step uh, that process. I'm uh, I'm using Sun's VirtualBox to to run uh, two uh, virtual machines on my uh, Mac, here, so you can see. Um, so let's see if we can get this scrolling to work properly here. I, I I, Catherine, I had to open up the slides again because the scrolling didn't work uh, properly there. Um, so, um, so the uh, the technology stack in particular that I'm talking about is uh, first of all in MySQL the um, the cluster configuration or multi-master, uh, sometimes called uh, circular replication, uh, and um, and then on top of uh, multi-master replication. Uh, we're going to run a tool called MMM, which is uh, Multi Master Manager, uh, and that tool uh, basically provides high availability uh, to your multi master configuration uh, and allows um, the exposure of a virtual IP for your application uh, and manages switching back and forth, um, so you always have one system available. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, that configuration basically facilitates uh, the zero the zero or no downtime upgrades. Um, so as I as I explained, the multi master configuration uh, is it's not active active; it's active passive, which means you do have two uh, MySQL servers uh, that are are running at the same time, but only one of them your application is pointing. So uh, and this is made possible by uh, a dynamic server variable in MySQL uh, called the read-only variable, uh, and that can be changed while your server is up and running, so you don't have to shut down uh, MySQL. And as you'll see, uh, the MMM uh, tool on top uh, manages that variable for us. <coughs> so again, um, I'm just I'm just uh, illustrating here the um, that you can set uh, the the read-only variable to false or true dynamically. Um, so the first thing um, is I've set up two virtual machines on Sun's virtual box. Uh, I'm calling them Wolf and Lamb. Uh, after not the after the nursery rhyme, but after uh, some uh, some music uh, some that I like. Um, so anyway, uh, we have two two um, virtual machines. Hopefully they'll be easier to remember. One's called Wolf. One's called Lamb. They both have MySQL. Um, well, we'll have MySQL running on them. Uh, and one of them will also be running the um, MMM monitor tool. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is install MySQL uh, 5077 on both of those machines. Uh, then I'm going to set up a standard uh, master slave uh, MySQL, which is what I'm illustrating here. And basically, you um, you dump the database, uh, copy it over to the other machine. Um, import that entire dump to the other machine, and then um, using show master status on the original, uh, you you run the change master change master two command on the slave side. Um, that's a standard master slave setup. Um, with master master, there's one additional step um, after you set a number of uh, parameters. I'm going to go through all these in the command line ter terminal. I just want to run through. First in the uh, presentation, um, the um, the very last step step is that on the um, uh, on the original server of the master, in our case Wolf, uh, we also run a change master to command. Uh, and so what what you what you end up having is you have um, the normal master slave configuration on the slave side. Uh, you have an SQL thread and an I/O thread. The uh, I/O thread copies transactions. Uh, that get applied on the master in its um, binary logs, copies them to its own slave relay log, 
and then the SQL thread applies them to that database. In circular replication, the master database is also doing the same thing. So it's monitoring the slaves' uh, uh, binary log and copying transactions over. Um, now, as you may have noticed uh, in the my.cnf file, in a circular replication, there's a server ID. Um, and the server ID is really important uh, when you have master master because it uh, prevents the circular apply or, or infinite transactions. So basically, um, when the wolf database ends up copying those same transactions that applied on the slave, uh, it sees the transaction, sees the server ID, and, and it recognizes that it originated on itself. So it won't it won't keep applying the same transactions, but what what it means is that the the two servers are in a, a configuration where either one can can easily be the master, and that's sort of the key uh, takeaway from that. From that. so um, so all these all these slides are basically illustrating that, and I'm going to jump over to the uh, terminal window. So uh, so we're we're running a CentOS 5.5, so we have YAM, um, and to install uh, MySQL, it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> and we're going to do the same thing by MySQL on the uh, Wolf database. So Wolf again is the what you might call DB1, and 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 Lamb is uh, DB2. So they're both installing um, those components. Uh, the nice thing about package managers, uh, Yum, or if you're using Ubuntu apt-get, is that uh, you know you get all your packages and the dependencies are. Are handled uh, in a very uh, you know smooth way, which is make which facilitates a presentation like this uh, happen all in a matter of a few minutes. Okay, so we have MySQL installed on the uh, Lamb side, and now we have it on the uh, Wolf side. So um, we don't currently have a database created. So what happens when you um, start up MySQL? Is oh, I didn't install the server. Sorry. So that installs the common components. We also have to install install server, I believe. I've run through this a uh, number of times, and um, there's so many little steps that um, sometimes it's easy to uh, overlook one. But basically, we're just installing the um, all the MySQL components, the client and the server, um, and then uh, we'll start up a database. So um, we should now be able to, uh, yeah, there it is. So, so we can issue a start. And the first time you run um, MySQL, it'll realize there's no database, and it should create one for us. <coughs> Initializing MySQL database, installing the initial tables. Um, there is a um, uh, script if you wanted to recreate that. Um, I think it's MySQL install DB. So there we have MySQL started here. Uh, we'll also do the same on the LAMP side. So, um, so the next thing we need to do, as I outlined in the uh, presentation, is fortunately we lose focus here when I jump back and forth, um, is to dump the database. Um, Flush privileges, um, flush tables with read lock, uh, show master status, MySQL dump. So that's basically the the outline for uh, setting up master slaves. That's what we're going to do now. So uh, go into MySQL um, and do a um, uh, flush table. Sorry, so flush tables with read lock, show master status. Flash G uh, shows you your results instead of the um, 
this? Why is it giving me that? Fuck. There's always something. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Show master status. Is it not liking that? Just a second here. I have to figure out what's going on. Oh, I know why. I didn't copy the... Um, Sorry. So I have a, a pre-created um, my.cnf file for each of these two servers, um, and it's running the, um, the default one out of the box. So, um, so I need to copy these across to to those two servers. So, um, so copy the lamb one to to root at lamb, and these go into etc. on the um, CentOS uh, install, etc. my.cnf. And scp my.cnf dot wolf at wolf. Okay, and um, and so we should just be able to start. Now I may have some trouble here because I start, I stopped while it was locked, creating complexity here. But hopefully we'll have problems with that. So um, okay. A flush tables with read lock. Show master status. Okay, so this is telling us the current um, bin log file and the position. Now we also have to restart uh, the uh, LAM side because we changed the my.cnf file. And I'm going to run through the, the settings in the my.cnf file in just a minute. I just want to make sure that we can uh, get this set up properly. So um, so I have another window here that's a wolf uh, root window. So let's do MySQL dump dash a um, full wolf dump dot MySQL and then copy that across to the uh, lamb database. And on the LAMP side, um, we're going to apply that. What we're, what we're doing is basically just right now setting up master-slave um, MySQL. So um, we dumped the database. Now we can go back and unlock, unlock those tables. You need to lock the tables while you're doing a complete database dump so that the transaction pointer isn't moving. The, the position doesn't change here. So, um, so we imported on the MySQL side of LAM. Let's go back to LAM here. And so just to make sure we're not running a slave already, stop slave. Um, so we need to run change master too. Change one more thing. One one more little small thing is we have to create uh, the um, replication users. So the uh, grants, less CR grants. So the the grant for the slave is here, and it's um, I'm just using the user rep. I'm identify uh, allowing from global, so we don't have any networking problems, and the password is rep. So so um, We'll apply that here. Apply the grants here. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, I set up the t database as skip grant table so that I wouldn't have login problems, um, and I have to disable that temporarily to create, uh, like, to run these grants. Um, we do want to. Hey, 
may it may work without that. Let's let's try it, and if not, we'll uh, restart the database. So, um, so we should get the same error here. So MySQL dash u root. I hope everyone's following me. Basically, there's so many moving parts that uh, you know everything's slightly different when you run again, but. I'm running the database currently, the two databases with skip grant tables, so I wouldn't get any issues or errors with authentication, hoping to simplify the presentation. Um, and it's giving me problems with the grants. But I, I think um, it will, uh, it may still work, but we'll, let's, um, let's see what happens here. So change master to master user equals rep. Master password equals rep. Master host equals wolf. Master master log file equals and we have the master log file here. Master log position equals 98 and uh, start save yeah 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 so so the issue is with the skip grant table so let's uh, let's go fix that problem so you can always re-enable it so skip grant tables So, oops. Start. <clears throat> okay, so let's retry running the uh, grants here. Okay, so that runs fine, and then on the same thing on the Slave side. Okay. Okay. So now let's go back into the uh, server and see if we can um, change master two. So again, change master two, master user, um, and um, there might be one more anomaly since we've rerun another transaction that may have changed the transaction pointer. Hopefully, it won't. Um, Yeah, it did, of course. Of course, I have to make things a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to try another hack, which otherwise we have to re go back from the beginning because of the script grant table issue. Uh, I'm going to try uh, setting the uh, pointer to there and see if that works. So uh, change master to, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is uh, unfortunately one hour doesn't give us enough time to troubleshoot um, these kinds of issues. Um, let's try deleting the master infrastructure and see if that works. <clears throat> or stop my SQL. Okay. Start slave. Show slave status. Okay, so it's of course not running because that would be that would make the presentation go very smoothly and we can't have that. Um
Okay, I think the problem is that we have to redo the, the dump from a particular point in time. So let's try that um, and, uh, and see if that uh, works. So, yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I've run through this presentation uh, probably uh, five or six times and, you know, it went smoothly. You know, there's always hiccups and, you know, unfortunately the script grant table is just throwing a curveball here. So, um, basically, I'm going to restart from the step where we, we did the dump on Wolf and, and try to set up uh, Master Slave again here. So, uh, so um, let's see, flush tables with with read lock. Show master status. Okay, and then um, in another window, we're going to dump the uh, Wolf database. SQL dump. A full wolf to dot mysql and copy that across to the lamp side. That's root. Okay, and then um, unlock tables, and then on the lamp. Database um, MySQL dash U root full dash U root full to uh, what is oh <laughs> always something here okay so um, So we will stop slave just to make sure that it's not already running. And then the change master to, uh, again, the issue was here, it's now at the bin log file number two. So um, so we'll change this to two. The position is 605. Uh, and cross our fingers, we'll be in good shape. Start slave. Start. Slave. Show slave status. Okay, so this is what we wanted here. Shape. Uh, so both the slave IO uh, thread and uh, the slave SQL thread should be running in order for um, for this to work correctly. Um, now um, we want to get the, so. So basically now we have master slave running uh, where wolf is the master and lamb is the slave. Now there's one extra step to get master master running and that is um, to do the same thing on the wolf side to make it the slave. Well, um, so you do show master status um, on the uh, lamb side and then we're going to use these credentials to do change master two here. So change master to master user equals rep master uh, password equals rep master master host equals lamb um, lamb in this case uh, because this is the wolf side um, master log file equals and then the log file is this one, lamb02. Master log position equals, and then this, this number. Start slave. Show slave status. Okay, so of course that's not running either. There's always something. <clears throat> Being to rep access denied for rep rep at wolf. Okay, let's try redoing that grant on the uh, lamb side. So. Um, Grant replication, just just so you know what I'm doing here. Uh, cat CR grants. Um, 
Grant replication slave replication client start at start who rep at percent and identified by rep. So uh, percent should say anywhere, and I don't, I don't know why that the existing user didn't work. Let's try that again. Yeah. Um, uh, fortunately, it's not liking this here. Try this. And so this transaction change. So let's let's try that number. We're really we're really hacking here. Uh, stop slave. Start slave. A slave status. Yeah, it's um, it's very. Uh, uh, let's see if I can see what's happening. Um, unfortunately, the uh, all these components. There's a lot of different pieces here, and until uh, master master is running, uh, the MMM uh, tool isn't going to be running on top of them. So uh, short of uh, you know, troubleshooting all these problems, I'm just going to have to run through the. Um, I'm just going to have to run through the uh, description of the files and explain it in the abstract. Uh, fortunately, I, I uh, apologize for that. I mean, I've run through this presentation and, and gotten it down to about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, five or six times. But uh, you know, there's no there's no room to breathe in terms of troubleshooting and and. We could go on for an hour uh, messing around with uh, troubleshooting file positions and transaction IDs and, and log files and so on and so forth. So uh, it's uh, it's unfortunate. No, I checked the server ID. I appreciate the comments. Uh, the server IDs are different. Um, so um, w w one thing that you need to understand in order to set up master master is what do the config files look like. So um, they are, there's a few extra parameters in the um, config file. So the data there is standard. Um, the server ID is something that I illustrated before. Sean, Sean, is, uh, Sean, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. We suddenly picked up some terrible um, static or some audio feedback. There's some noise there. I don't know what that was. Okay. okay. It's still coming through, it's your mic. It now, yeah, feedback and... Um, did you do something that could have affected it? I don't think so. I, don't think so. Um, I, I, can, I can try, can try pausing, pausing the, the mic the and mic starting it up, starting up again. Uh, uh, please try that. Box. Someone's saying if it's Plantronics, unplug and replug. Okay. Okay. I don't think I don't think clicking that button is going to do it. I'm hearing myself also. Do you have your uh, speaker on there? I just uh, I just unplugged the Plantronics. Let me go. In. Uh, So yes, that is set to input. That is set to output. All right, but you're you're sounding better can now. now. Whatever. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it's using the external speaker now on, on my laptop because I am the Plantronics plug. Uh, mm. We're troubleshooting everything today. This is uh, this is frustrating here. Um, Sean, would you prefer then to reschedule and do this another time? Do you think that you um, lost momentum? We, would it we, we, could just as easily, we could just as easily run into the same problem at any time. I mean, like I said, I run through this presentation six times and it, and it went smoothly. Um, okay. I, um, 
I, I'd like to just go through and explain the files. And, All right. Uh, All um, right. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'll be quiet. Go ahead. So I was just explaining. Okay. Okay. So I was just explaining the uh, my.cnf files. So there's a few differences uh, when you have master master. First of all, the server ID. That's pretty important. Um, without the server ID being unique on your two uh, servers, uh, when they're in master master configuration, they wouldn't know where to stop. So the transactions are applied from the master to the slave, and then they then they make their way to the original master and are it sees that its own server ID is in there in the transaction, it won't apply it. So that's what the server ID is for. Um, all the, the data during the socket are all the same. I, I set bind address to global so I wouldn't have any, you know, knock on wood, I wouldn't have any troubleshooting problems. Um, log bin, relay bin, relay log are for, um, well, the, the standard binary log, you can't have master slave replication without it. Uh, and the relay log is where transactions get copied from the master uh, to the slave side, uh, and it's where the SQL thread uh, reads transactions and applies them uh, on the slave side. Um, expire log stays means it deletes the old um, lock files. Um, and uh, log slave updates is also important. Read only is set to one, uh, but again, it's managed by MMM, and the MMM tool um, basically um, sets that to, to read write for the server that's currently uh, active. Um, and again, skip grant tables I had enabled uh, to eliminate per, uh, you know problems with uh, you know authentication. So hoping that would eliminate problems, but it didn't eliminate problems. <laughs> Um, so again, the i.cnf file is pretty similar on both servers. So assuming that we had gotten um, master master configured at this point, and again, it's, it's one extra step from uh, master slave, which is what we already have. Um, you, um, you then set up the uh, wolf database to run as the slave of lamb. So then you have master master. Um, the next thing you do is, is install uh, MMM. Um, and so MMM, there is uh, a few different components. So one is there is a, a uh, an agent. Uh, let me see where we are here in the presentation. Um, there is uh, an agent that you install on both servers, and then there's a monitoring daemon that just goes just gets installed on one server. Um, so where are we here? Um, again, MMM exposes uh, a virtual IP for writer role. Uh, and that's what your application would connect to. Um, so the, the installation would be a yum install um, MySQL MMM agent, uh, a yum install the monitor, and, and then the tools. Um, and then the, the setup involves uh, two grants, which we already um, did with our create grant script, uh, and then editing a few files, which I'm going to run through for you. Um, to show you what those configurations look like. Um, and then once you're done with that, you can run the MMM control utility, and it'll show you, as illustrated here, um, you know, which server is currently the master um, reader and what's, which one's the writer. Um, and then you can switch roles so that the other server becomes the reader and writer. And, and um, you know, all the while you're switching, you have an IP address that your application can connect to that um, continues to serve the application, so you're always plugged into one of the two uh, databases. Um, and then the last step would be the um, uh, the actual upgrade of the software. So, um, so let me run through those those configuration files. Um, so, let's see. So there's there's a couple different files here. Um, there is the MMM agent, and the reason why we have this tilde one is because the uh, let me look at the RPM save one uh, because we we would have reinstalled it with yum, so the the files got deleted. Um, so this this file includes the the common file, and then just tells us which uh, which server we are. So that's pretty simple. Um, so the MMM common is the main configuration file. Um, it tells it which device file you're running on. 
um, which is your NIC card, ETH0, um, some log file configuration. It, uh, it specifies the replication user and password. And then it specifies the agent user and password. It needs an agent um, to do some additional things. I think it's show process, uh, or show process list. Um, and then we also specify in here um, the IP addresses of each of the different machines. Um, the peer is the opposite uh, server in the configuration, so LAM's peer is Wolf and Wolf's peer is LAM, um, and they can both be master. Um, the writer role here is, is configured as exclusive, and then the reader role is balanced. So what, what this means is expose this virtual IP address to my application, 192.168.1.250. And that will always be the writer role, no matter which database is serving as the, the, the master and active database. Um, and then um, the reader role can be either one. Uh, so it will basically load balance between the two for reader. You can also have it you know, always be the opposite of uh, the uh, writer role, if you like. Um, so that would be the agent. So then uh, to start up the agent, you do et cetera, init that the uh, MySQL MMM agent space start, uh, and it would start up the agent, and you would do that on both Wolf and LAN. Um, and then once you're done uh, with that, you'd configure the monitor, and in this case, we're running that on, on the Wolf server, but you would probably theoretically install that on a, on a third server. Um, if, if anyone is wondering about a single point of failure at this point, uh, I, I actually tested it and read through some of the um, um, some of the forums and stuff, and basically if the monitor dies, the, the virtual IP is still uh, defined, so your application would still be plugged into the primary database. So only if MMM died and your, your primary database died would your application go down. So I, again, it, it, MMM is not introducing more um, failure potential. Um, so so MMM monitor is the main uh, config file. MMM monitor. So uh, it needs to know how to log in as MMM monitor. And again, those those grants were ones that were in that grant file. Um, here we specify the the two IP addresses so that it can ping them and know if one of them is down. Um, and um, that's where it's running itself. So if that was the third server, you would specify that third server there. Um, so that's basically it. And then you would start up the, the monitor, uh, et cetera, uh, MySQL MMM um, dash monitor start, et cetera, and it's empty, right? Um, and then once the MMM tool is running, then you could run MMM control, which I outlined here as well. Uh, MMM control allows you to, I actually think I have that installed so we can show you the, um, yeah, I guess it's not, uh, it's not installed. Well, that's because of those yum, yum installs that we, um, steps that we didn't run. Um, so anyway, the, the MMM control utility uh, allows us to switch roles. So, so this sort of leads us to the last step, which is the upgrade. So, in order to perform the upgrade, you would basically um, uh, use MMM control to move the role to, say, Wolf, um, and then you would upgrade LAM. So you would uh, shut down LAM the way you normally would shut down MySQL, et cetera, and knit that the MySQL stop. Um, and then you would um, upgrade the software. In, in, in our case, I installed it in a temp directory, so it'd be easy to, to demonstrate. Um, and then you start up MySQL, uh, make sure the agent can see uh, MySQL again, uh, and then go back to MMM control. Um, and no, I'm not illustrating anything with the command line at this point. I'm just explaining at high level. Um, you would go back to MMM control and switch roles again and start up. So uh, again, start Wolf as primary, take LAM offline, upgrade LAM, and bring it online. Uh, switch roles, take Wolf offline. Uh, wolf is primary. Uh, stop. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm upgrading LAM. Then you would upgrade Wolf. So again, LAM is primary. Stop slave on Wolf. Shut down Wolf. Uh, upgrade the software on Wolf. Uh, verify the uh, my.cnf file. 
um, and then start up the database again. And you would, um, you know, basically your application would be continuing to use that virtual IP. So um, there, uh, there's, you know, no issue with the application being down because it's always plugged into one of those uh, master databases. Um, as, as a further aside, and, and I want to get to some questions because unfortunately we didn't get the whole thing running, so the questions are probably pretty important. But uh, there are a lot of other things you can do with this configuration. Uh, you can do online alter of tables on your uh, non-active database and then switch roles so it becomes active. So similar to any, anything you can do like an upgrade of a database you can do uh, with this configuration. So the inactive database, you can make changes, switch roles, and by doing that, your application never sees any downtime. Uh, you can use, do heavy reporting queries on the in, inactive database. Um, robust block, block backups. Um, you know, one other thing that MMM uh, allows is you to easily add slaves uh, to the configuration. Um, and uh, you know, one one other thing, so I, I noticed that somebody had mentioned uh, in in one of the uh, the chat windows uh, asking about transactional tables and in general with um, Replication, you don't want to have a mix of MyISM and InnoDB tables. So, so that person is definitely correct. Uh, you want to use um, InnoDB tables primarily, um, if not 100% InnoDB tables. Um, and that's because replication uh, relies on uh, commits and the transactions get rid to the binary log at commit time and get applied linearly uh, sorry, serially on the um, slave side. So it's pretty important that um, that, that happen um, uh, in, a, in a repeatable way, and that's why transactions are important. Um, the other thing is that uh, replication can get out of sync, and so uh, checksums are important. There's a, there's a MAT kit tool called MK Table Checksum, uh, and that I've, I've done another presentation and some, some articles on that. If anyone's interested, uh, email me. Um, but that will allow you to do checking to verify that your master and slave are in sync. So you know you may want to do that periodically, depending on uh, you know how much activity you have in the database. I had some fur further reading, some really good books uh, on MySQL. I'm going to post this presentation, so um, so if anyone wants to to see it, you'll be able to see it on SlideShare. Um, and some interesting uh, uh, videos on. Um, High availability. Um, so, so just a conclusion. MMM um, and Master Master um, introduce a whole new level of flexibility to your MySQL uh, deployments, uh, and those bring a whole new set of features to, to MySQL that um, that you wouldn't have had with a single MySQL database. And it, it increases your overall availability because. Um, MMM exposed a virtual IP, so your application never sees any um, any significant downtime. So, um, so this is um, how you would reach me. Um, that's my blog, and I guess I'm gonna uh, switch over to to questions. Sure, if I'm uh, still connected here. Sean, can you? Yeah, yeah. You can hear me? Yeah, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, so I did ask a question. Sean, Jim has a question. Why don't you minimize that window to get it out of the way? Uh, which? The, the, this main window? Yeah. Okay. Everyone has it already on. OK. So Jim is asking, wouldn't you have to, up, to dump from the online master to the upgraded node after the upgrade? Set up master master. Is he asking? Well, he didn't say that. Set up master master. Do you he, need, yeah, I think he may be referring to that. Um, if, there, if there's no activity um, on the slave side, um, then you should be able to issue the change master to right after um, 
uh, right after setting the um, so so basically the, the the steps are dump the the primary data so let's call them DB1 and DB2 so dump DB1 um, while all the tables are locked and find out what's the current transaction ID and the current uh, binary lock file. Um, copy the dump file across the network to the DB2 side, uh, import the entire dump into that database, and then run change master 2. So DB2's master is becoming DB1. Now right after you do that, if there's no transactions in the environment, you should be able to run um, the change master 2 command on DB1 to make it slave off of DB2. Um, I've done that a number of times and it works, uh, you know, very consistently. It's just there were a lot of little moving parts that I, uh, the steps have to all be done in a very particular order or, or it doesn't work. And um, the, uh, the grants, you know, created a whole, through a, through a whole wrench in the works, I guess you could say. Okay. Then Anna had a couple questions. She wanted to know how does PHP My Admin come into play? And a second question, should I use PHP at My Admin at all? I generally um Hello? Um, you know, I generally tend to use the command line. I mean, obviously, I need, yeah. The command line you have 100% control over all the the moving parts. Um, PHP MyAdmin, you know, is, is a useful tool for, for some folks, adding columns and modifying tables and so on and so forth. Uh, but it's, it's definitely a good idea to get comfortable with the command line. Uh, you know, all of these commands you're not going to be able to run from PHP MyAdmin as far as I know. Okay. And then John had a question. Uh, can you upgrade MMM without having the front facing IP address disappear for the duration of the MMM upgrade? Um, I never tried upgrading MMM, so, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but I would guess um, since you can stop the monitor and the, the, um, the virtual IP is still assigned, um, um, there may be a way to do that without um, uh, without that virtual IP going away, but uh, you know I'd have to I'd have to test that um, to to verify it. Okay, I'm I if other folks if you have questions for um, Sean, please go ahead and submit them now. That that was the end of our questions so far, Sean. So okay. So I'm not seeing any other questions come in. So I, then I guess we'll just wrap it up for the day. And I want to thank you then for doing this webcast. Sorry about the, the, the demo issues you had, but like you said, they can happen any time. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah, one, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, one more question came in. Uh, Timothy is asking, under what type of loads would you use this method? Sean, I, I'm not hearing you. Uh, I mean, MMM can be used for in real production. Okay. It basically definitely use MMM in production environments, um, and. Uh, it basically manages, you know, it doesn't introduce, um, you know, performance bottleneck. Um, it's just basically exposing that virtual IP uh, and managing um, uh, which 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 master is available to your application. So, um, you know, definitely feel like you can uh, use it in uh, production environments. Okay, and um, then Tim is asking. Is there a way to run MMM multi-site rather than on the same subnet? Um, a great question. I'm not sure, Tim, I'm not sure what you mean by running MMM multi-site. Um, uh, there may be a way to do that. I don't, I don't know exactly. Maybe you can elaborate on what you're... Okay. Type, type really fast. Okay. <laughs> 
And then um, Dan is asking, do you plan to post a successful demo video? <laughs> That's very funny, Dan. I appreciate your humor. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I've run through this demo uh, six or seven times, and it's, it's run smoothly. Unfortunately, uh, you know, you can have a hiccup at any time. Um, I, I, I don't know if I necessarily have the bandwidth to do the, the complete presentation again, but, you know, if, if you want to look at scheduling it, I'd be glad to, uh, to try to find some time. Thanks, Sean. Um, I think I think that's all the questions we have for today. So I, I want to thank you very much for doing this today. And all right, so the questions keep coming in. And um, I, sorry, I keep getting interrupted in my wrap up. Okay, so uh, Danielle. Why don't we take one more question? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we have two. So Danielle is asking, can you set up MMM for multiple writers? Um, well, the problem isn't MMM. The problem is MySQL, I mean, databases in general don't support multiple writers well. I mean, in, in, in the Oracle world, you have Rack, uh, you know, and theoretically, um, you, you can have both databases be primary or, or active. Um, I mean, the problem is in order for both databases to be writers, you'd need two active databases. And that introduces, you know, a whole host of problems with, you know, who, who, what happens when you have conflicts. Um, there, there are ways to, to partition your application so you have multiple uh, databases that each have a slice of data. And, um, you know, there's a, a MySQL facility uh, auto increment, increment that will, um, you know, facilitate that kind of thing. But, you know, in general, trying to have um, multiple masters that are both active is, is sort of a recipe for, for trouble. Um, and so that's why um, the MMM tool that runs on top is exposing only one as the, uh, the writer at a time. Okay, and we have a related question from Bill. And because I'm not really an expert in this subject, you may have just answered it, but he is asking, um, the MMM configuration mentioned multiple readers, so does MMM handle load balancing to both servers automatically? Uh, yeah, yeah, Bill, uh, the reader part does load balance. So, well, it depends on how you can have it configured. You can have it do load balancing. Uh, or you can have all the read requests go to the passive server uh, and all the write requests go to the um, active server. Um, there's a few different ways you can configure that. Okay. And Danielle, I don't know if it's Daniel or Danielle. I'm, I'm sorry. The spelling's kind of unique. So forgive me if I mangled your name. Is saying again, I was asking in the, about the, in the partitioning situation and said thanks. So. Right, um, Daniel or Danielle, um, I uh, I haven't uh, I haven't tried to run MMM uh, in that type of configuration, um, so you know I don't know offhand uh, how well it may support that. Um, but the configuration options that I see in there seem to indicate that you know that it would support that. But again, I haven't used it in that um, in that configuration in production or in. I haven't found a lot of documentation to that effect either. Um, there is a Google group for, for um, MySQL, MySQL MMM. If you search for that on groups.google.com, you'll find the, the forum for um, for the for the software. Okay. And once again, I now we really are out of time, so I want to thank you, Sean, and thank everyone else for joining us today. We will have this video, the recording of this, available. It will probably take us a day or so to have it ready. And we'll send everyone who registered an email with the links to where you can view it. If you just want to know, we put them on our YouTube channel. That's OReillyYouTube.com slash O'Reilly Media, all one word. All of our webcasts are there. We also send you a link so you can view it again in Adobe Connect if you prefer to view it that way. Well, thanks, Marcy. And, um, and we'll get that out to you in a day or so. 
And that's about it. I want to thank you very much, Sean, for doing this. And thank you, everyone else, for joining us and for joining in the conversation today. Thanks so much. OK. All right, everyone. So I'm going to count to 10 and close the meeting out. And uh, hope you'll join us again soon. <laughs>